Welcome to Central Community. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Let's try that one more time. At home, you can say, I'll say Christ is risen. You say he is risen indeed. Christ is risen. He is, he is risen, risen indeed. indeed. It's a wonderful day to have Easter together, to celebrate the risen Lord. If you're at home right now, I would encourage you to start getting dressed and shower so you can rush out here and be here for our 10 a.m. service out in the park because it's such a glorious day. But if you've got a cup of coffee, you've got the blanket pulled up and you're perfectly comfortable, welcome to Central Community. Join us for worship. Join us for the message. We are so thankful that you're sharing Easter with us today. Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Whose love is mighty and so much stronger? The King of glory, the King above all kings. Who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder? Who leaves us breathless in awe and wonder? The King of glory, the King above all thank you for your guidance and your love. We thank you for a, a celebration of Easter, and we thank you that we could come here 
and we can just sing songs that you are worthy of our praise and our love, God, because you gave us the same thing. You gave us your love. You gave us grace. You gave us mercy. You died on a cross, and you rose victorious. And so today we celebrate that victory because you want it for each and every one of us. And so we thank you for the blessings and the opportunity of this day of life itself. And as we go through this beautiful day, we thank you for being there for us. And God, we want to be there for you today. And so we want to share the message of the love that is in our hearts and our lives, the love that took us from the pits into victory today. And so, Father, we thank you that we don't have to look at a tomb. We can overcome that power. We can overcome the obstacles and the scars and the tragedies of life because you've given us victory. And so today we thank you for this time of celebration. We ask you to be with our concerns and needs in life. We ask you to be with our family and friends and let us have a great experience that is Easter Day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I am guilty Ashamed of what I've done What I've become These hands are dirty I dare not lift them up To the Holy One You plead my cause, you right my wrongs, you break my chains, you overcome, you gave your life to give me mine, you say that I am free, how can it be? can it be I've been hiding afraid I've let you down inside I doubt that you still love me But in your eyes, there's only grace now. You plead my cause, you right my wrongs, you break my chains, you overcome, you gave your life. To give me mine You say that I am free How can it be? Yeah. How can it be? Though I fall you can make me from this death I will rise with you Oh, the grace reaching out for me yeah. How can it be? How can it be? You plead my cause you right my wrongs, you break my chains, you overcome, you gave your life to
to give me mine you say that i am free how can it be yeah how can it be how can it be how can it be You know, if I wasn't planning on coming to second service, I would come just to hear that again. Thank you so much. That was absolutely awesome. Imagine that you had a friend. Hi, Marty. It's good to see you. Imagine that you had a friend that was going to be your friend forever. Jesus looked at his disciples and he said, I no longer call you servants, but instead I call you friends. For servants don't know everything that the master is going to do, but friends... They know everything, and I've told you everything that I'm going to be doing for us to know that like the old song says, what a friend we have in Jesus. What a gift it is for us to know that friend is alive today, that he's risen, and he's a friend forever. The text on the back of your card this morning inside your program from the Gospel of Mark, the 16th chapter, these women have already suffered through watching their friend, their savior, the one they loved most in life, the one they'd given up everything to follow. For the last three years of their lives, they had watched him be brutally crucified, which essentially we say crucified, and we forget that that was just torture. It was a torturous way to die. They had watched him be tortured at the cross, and then not just to be tortured, but then to die and then for them to remove him from the cross, to lay him down and take his body away, to put him in a tomb that had been donated for him because he didn't have anything to buy a tomb. And when they put his body away, then the sun went down, it was a Sabbath. There was nothing they could do. They couldn't prepare his body for burial. They couldn't do anything. They thought the least we can do for this one we love so much is we could prepare his body for burial. And then on Sunday, the first day of the week, they woke up very early. Now remember, these people, it's not like they had the grocery store to go to real quick, but it says they ran out and they bought everything they needed to prepare someone for burial because it's not like everyone kept all that stuff around the house. And they got ready for it, and that's where the text picks up this morning. It says, after the Sabbath, remember that would have been Saturday, Mary Magdalene, Salome. You know, Mary Magdalene, if you look through the scriptures, second only to Mary, the mother of Jesus, she's spoken more about than anybody else in the scriptures. When you see Mary Magdalene, we think, well, Magdalene must have been her last name. That means she's from the little village of Magdala. And so they call her Mary Magdalene, Mary who came from Magdala. Who came from, so Mary Magdalene, Salome, who as far as we know, this is just about the only spot she's mentioned in scriptures, and Mary, the mother of James, that's not Mary, the mother of Jesus. This is Mary, the mother of James, and not Mary, the mother of James and John. Lots of Marys. It's one of those things down at Siempre para los Niños. You can't believe it. Kids come in, and you wouldn't believe how many of the orphans that come to us, the girls were named Mary. And so what they do is they change their names. Well, you're going to go by this. You're going, And then our workers, we have multiple Marys, so you're going to go by this. You're going to go by this, just so we can all get through it. Same in the scriptures. They were being named Mary like crazy, kind of like people in the 50s were all named Debbie. I mean, it was very similar. I mean, they were all, after this, they all had a name. Mary was a very, very popular name. They bought some spices to put on Jesus' body. Very early on Sunday morning, just as the sun was coming up, they went to the tomb. On their way, they were asking one another, who will roll away the stone from the entrance for us? And that's the way we go through life, right? I mean, we go through life thinking about, we got a big problem out ahead of us. I mean, we want to get into the tomb. We want to address Jesus. We want to put the spices on his body and prepare him. But we know that we watched him roll this huge stone over the tomb. Who's going to roll away the stone? But when they looked, 
they saw that the stone had already been rolled away, and it was a huge stone. The women went into the tomb, and on the right side they saw a young man in a white robe sitting there, and they were alarmed. If you have King James Version, this is, I believe, the contemporary English version I'm reading to you today, the newest translation of the scriptures. Um, King James, it would say what? They were terrified. They were so afraid. Over and over, they were frightened. They were alarmed. Same thing, all the same difference here. Um, they were alarmed. The man said, don't be alarmed. You were looking for Jesus from Nazareth, who was nailed to the cross. God has raised him to life, and he isn't here. You can see the place where they put his body. Now go and tell his disciples, and especially Peter, that he will go ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there, just as he told you. Isn't it impressive? How much time did he give the women to process this moment? The stone had been rolled away. They walk into a grave. There's an angel there. And they say, Jesus is alive. He's not here. Now go and do this. Now go and do this. And I think about how many times we come to church and there's suddenly something for us to do. Now, you know, okay, you believe in God. You love Jesus. Good. Go do this. Wait a second, you know, I just want to have a loving relationship with this revolutionary Jesus. I just kind of want to hang out with God and feel better about myself. And there's never that example in the scriptures. The example in the scriptures is Jesus is waiting. That friend that you can have for life is waiting on you to be your friend because he's also your savior. He's also your Lord. And he's alive and he's risen for us Today, like many of you, I grew up in a neighborhood that looked like something out of a 1950s TV show. I mean, all the kids were everywhere. There were tons of kids. We weren't allowed to watch TV during the daytime. We weren't allowed, we, well, computer games didn't exist, so it wasn't like we weren't allowed to, computers didn't exist yet. We played with each other. We all went out, we ran up and down the street, we played. My next door neighbor was my best friend, like with many kids, your next door. And Bobby and I grew up, playing together, hanging out together, and it was a great time having a built-in best friend. We were only a year or so apart in age. His parents put in a swimming pool. How great is it to have your next door neighbor put in a swimming pool so we got to swim in the swimming pool all the time? And then Bobby had muscular dystrophy. And so even though when we were little kids, he just had braces on and then crutches and braces, then he was put into a wheelchair and then I was kind of in charge. I mean, we got to go wherever I wanted because I could just push Bobby wherever I, we wanted to go. And I'd say, Bobby, where do you want to go? And we'd just roll wherever we wanted to go. And we would head out. I had a friend who was with me all the time. And that friend, the memory of it, it's not like it's ever left me in any way, shape, or form. It was just that friend, just like you have friends from childhood that you remember. But Jesus is that friend that's so far beyond it. Remember, these guys, he was not a childhood friend to them. He was a friend that they met as an adult, that Jesus is the one who called him a friend. Jesus said, you are my friends. And then they called him Lord, they called him Savior. Mary of Magdala, Mary Magdalene, remember she ended up seeing the resurrected Lord, and he said, Mary, and she recognized his voice, so she didn't recognize his face. She said, Rabboni in Aramaic, she said, teacher, rabbi. She spoke to him, not as a friend, but now as a teacher, for us to be able to meet that Jesus so that we can become that kind of friend that lasts forever. Just for those of you who have been raised in the church, almost a friend of convenience, because that friend is always there, just like a next door neighbor. The friend that's built into our lives, First of all, it says we can meet Jesus this morning when we change our focus, when we change our focus from obstacles to opportunities, from obstacles to opportunities. And for each of us, we have a tendency when we're moving in life to see which, the obstacles or the opportunities. Regardless, we have a habit of looking at the obstacles, don't we? 
We have the habit of looking at the obstacles in our relationships, the things that are going to stand in the way. We have a habit of looking at the obstacles in our work life, the things that are going to stand in the way. We have a habit of looking at the obstacles in traveling, just going someplace, the things that are going to stand in the way, as opposed to the opportunities of what we still have out ahead of us. And for each of us, at some point, we need to change our focus so we begin not to look at the obstacles, but instead the opportunities. These women, they're going to the stone. They don't know Jesus is raised from the dead. They don't know what's out ahead of them. So they're only asking one thing about the obstacle in front of them. Who will roll away the stone? Who's going to roll away this stone? How is this going to be taken care of for us? And all they could think about it was that. And then was it taken care of all on its own? It was taken care of and they didn't need to worry about it. How much time have you spent worrying about the obstacles in life? And if you'd only put your energy instead on the opportunities, so many great things could have happened for us. But instead we spent so much energy focusing op on the obstacles, we were worried we were filled with anxiety. We didn't do the things we wanted to do in our lives. We didn't have the relationships that we wanted to do in our lives. And so we need to begin to focus on the, I love this quote. I, I have no clue who said it, came across it at some point in my life. It says, the ability to focus is like a muscle. The more you work it, the stronger it gets. The ability to focus it's like a muscle. The more you work it, the stronger it gets. And when we begin to focus on the opportunity out ahead of us, as opposed to every single obstacle. Do people who have opportunities complain as much as people who focus on the, opportun on the obstacles? Who complains the most? Those who are looking at the obstacles, right? I mean, oh no, how am I going to get this done? We'll never do this. And then what do we do? The obstacles get so big that we say, yeah, I don't think I'll go. No, I don't think I'll do that, man. I have to get showered. I have to get dressed. I have to get in the car. I have to drive so far. I mean, as I got older, my friend of convenience was no longer my next door neighbor because my next door neighbor was in a wheelchair and he went to a school for special kids, a school that I didn't go to because I wasn't in a wheelchair and I didn't have muscular dystrophy. And so what happened was I ended up with my friends being friends at school. Friends that were my friends at school that were great. And then as I got into junior high school and high school, the friends at school became my best friends. And so my very best friend from childhood, from the time I was three years old, who was in a wheelchair and now not even able to leave the house because I wasn't coming over to roll him around, was stuck inside. And I was with friends that now had cars, they drove. We could go and we could do all those kinds of things. The fun things in life. People that I'm still friends with to this day. But in doing that, it was this transition of moving forward away from the best friend of childhood to the best friends of adulthood. Which is a difficult transition for each of us. So secondly, it says we can meet Jesus this morning when we trust God in our empty moments. When we trust God in our empty moments, because this is our faith. This is our faith when we trust God in those empty moments. It says, God has raised him to life and he isn't here. God, and what do you think they were thinking? Do they think they were celebrating or do you think they were thinking, what do you mean he isn't here? <laughs> I mean, what do you mean? We came here expecting him. We came here wanting him to be here, wanting him to be right where we understand the grave, we understand the tomb, we understood a big rock in front of it, we don't understand the dead coming to life, we don't understand him not being here, and even still, we don't understand those things. We struggle with it. How can we go to that next phase of our life to trust God in those empty moments of life? You see, this is our faith. God has raised him to life, and he isn't here. And we say, wait a second. Well, Jesus is here with us in spirit. How many of you are really glad that you have some friends that are here with you physically? I mean, how many of you are really glad that you have some family that are with you physically? 
All of us are thankful for that physical presence. But for us at Easter to remember that Jesus Christ is the friend that surpasses all friends and goes with us wherever we go through life. Bobby, as I began to get older and translate, I, I walked to school and then I hitchhiked to school when my school was four miles away from my house when I was in high school. And Bobby's bedroom, like my bedroom, is that our houses were right next to each other, similar floor plans. Had bedroom had been in the very back of the house and his parents moved his bedroom up to the front of the house. And where there used to be a wall, they took out the wall and they put in great big windows. So that when I walked by to go to school, and when I came home from school, Bobby sat at a table so he could watch his best friend walk by. So he could watch his friend come home. And he could see his friends and he would call for his mom, Betty, mom, mom. I next door with Betty and she would come in and she would tell him all the things that were happening in my life. And I would walk right by and I didn't even know at that point in my life that Bobby was waiting. And how many of us have driven by church, have driven by a relationship with God, have woken up morning after morning, not realizing that Jesus is alive. He's waiting, he's watching, just longing for one of us to ask him in, just longing for one of us to come in. He's not here, he's alive, he is risen, and he's got instructions for you. I love what um, Helen Keller said. She said, what we have once enjoyed deeply, we can never lose. All that we love deeply becomes part of us. All that we love deeply becomes part of us. My friend Bobby's, Bobby's death was one of the hardest days of my life. I was only 15 years old. People who have muscular dystrophy don't live very long. Um, tragedy, nobody told me that. I, you know, we just grew up. I didn't know he was gonna die. I got a call that he'd been rushed to the hospital. I went to the hospital, you know, and they wouldn't let me in because Betty said, his mom said, no, you don't want to see him like this. I know I, I want to be there with Bobby right now. Then the doctor came out and said he was gone. And he was gone just like that. And that's when Betty explained to me about how he sat in his room and he watched me go by and I felt so guilty. And she said, no, you should be thankful he loved you so much. He just wanted to be as close to your life as possible. That was 53 years ago. Imagine that more than half a century ago. And even still, the pain hits my heart. And even still, the love of a friendship is very real. And even so, all of it is close. Imagine going by every Easter, Pastor Church. Imagine going by without saying, God, I long to have you in my life. And yet for each of us, just like I remember Bobby so clearly, and none of you know him, and some of you have heard me tell stories about him. I mean, you can look up his father, Robert Zimke. I mean, Zimke actually won a lot of medals in World War II and all kinds of stuff, famous pilot. Um, it's, it's real in my life. Is Jesus real in your life today? I mean, as real as anything else? Jesus real in your life so that you know that it may have been an empty time at a tomb, but he was risen and he was alive. And so we come to that final point. We can meet Jesus this morning when we believe and we receive, ready to go together and surrender. I'd like to say that at 15 years old, and I received Jesus Christ for my first time at nine years old, but by the time I was 15, I was busy with everything else. Bobby wasn't the only person I was ignoring, let's put it that way. Bobby was just on a list of good company, including my family, including God, including Jesus, including a lot of other things. Um, he was just part of it all. But when you look at it, when we begin to believe and then we receive Christ Jesus, 
and we're ready to go together. Fully surrendered, it says, you will see him there just as he told you. He said, go to Galilee, where he said he would meet you, because if you go there, you're going to see him again. Imagine if someone were to tell me 53 years later, I know where you can hang out with Bobby again. You know, if you go down to the golf shop down at El Dorado Golf Course where Bobby and me used to hang out and eat french fries, Bobby's waiting for you. I would say they were crazy, first of all. And then I would think, I wonder if I can go hang out with Bobby one more time. I buried his parents. I've had their funerals. I've, his family. I mean, all of those things. But even still, I would think, oh, one more time. But I think what it must have been like for them to think we can see Jesus. We can be with Jesus again. We can receive the promise. Imagine living with the promise of knowing that Jesus is waiting on us, on you and me. And the message of Easter is that Jesus isn't dead, but he's alive, resurrected for each one of us. And this transitioning relationship we have from childhood friendships through adult friendships, all the way up to where we're now looking at eternity standing in front of us and knowing that Jesus is alive and we don't have to be afraid because he's waiting on you and me. He's waiting on us. We need to believe that Jesus is alive and we need to receive Jesus Christ into our hearts. There's nothing magic to it. We say, yeah, in my life, there have been a lot of stones that have been rolled away. I've focused on the obstacles way too many times and I wanna to begin to focus on the opportunities before me. I've trusted people instead of trusting God. I want to learn how to trust God through all the difficult transitions of getting older and going through the many different relationships I've had. I want to learn how to love, to believe and receive and understand that through them all, Jesus Christ will be with me. He'll hold my hand and he'll take me home. Jesus then said, I am the resurrection and the life the one who believes in me will live even though they die. Bobby used to come to church with us on Easter and all those times. And I remember as he got sicker, his wheelchair next to the end of the pew. And I remember the kids in the youth group saying, who's that? I said, my best friend, Bobby. It's my next door neighbor. And Bobby would be there. I was at youth group on the night he died. They called me. My cousin Mark Minnis drove us home, you know, real quick jumped in my car with my dad. We drove down to Memorial Hospital where Bobby was when they turned us away. My dad got to go back there because Bobby had one final request. Bobby could barely speak at that point. He would just whisper. It's just his lungs didn't have enough strength, much left he was dying of pneumonia. They said, Bobby, how can we help you? And he said, I want to see God and Mr. Denton. That's my dad. I want to see God. And Mr. Ditton. And so they let Dad back there. And Dad held his hands as he prayed. And Bobby slipped away into eternity. And I thought about what it is to know what we want in life. This is what Easter gives us. I want to see God. And I want to see my friends and family at home with me. I want to see God and I want to see those that I love to be there with me. I don't want to go there alone, Jesus. I want to go together. For us this morning, there's an opportunity for us to receive Christ Jesus or renew our relationship with Christ Jesus. Simple prayer at the bottom of your card. It just says this. I'm here to meet you, Jesus. I fought this relationship. I believe in you, the Father and the Holy Spirit. I'm thankful for your church. Please come into my heart. Give me a fresh start. I want to live for you. Thanks. And then on the back, there's a spot for you to fill in your name and your address, your credit card number, not just, not really, <laughs> your email address, whatever, whatever contact information if you want. And, and I've already done it. I do it every Easter. I've done it every Easter for decades. And every Easter I put, you know, Jesus, I need a fresh start with you. And I do. I'll tell you, as your, as your pastor, I never, never hesitate to ask for Jesus to come in and Give me that fresh start of Jesus to come into my heart for my first time. And you have the opportunity to put that in your offering plate this morning before you leave and say, Jesus, this is what I want for my life. 
because how many relationships have you had since that childhood friendship that you remember? How many relationships since those adulthood friends that they've stood by you? My adulthood friend, Brad, we're still friends. We talk on the phone once a week, and when we needed the church painted, he's an artist, and what did I do? I called him, Brad, you paint. Yeah, I'm an artist. Can you come out and paint the church? And he spent a week here and painted it all for free. I mean, I mean, I lean on my friends. Those of you who are my friends, you know that I lean on my friends. It's, it's, it's a blessing to have friends. But what a friend we have in Jesus. A friend who is here for us today. A friend who is here for us tomorrow. A friend who is here through every friendship. And a friend who welcomes us home to eternity. That says, I I'm here for you. We've been feeding people for the last 200 years, it feels like sometimes, for the last two and a half years, almost three years here at Central Community in our parking lot. And for the last few weeks, as we've gone through, and we've, each week seems like we've broken new records, I think it was 129,000 individuals now that we've provided food for in the last two and a half years. It's a crazy number, 129,000. I mean, it's just absolutely insane. But as we, and because of it, we've received accolades that were undeserving. Believe me, we're undeserving of accolades. We just want to. We just want to be there to help. But I went through. I've been going through the line in the last few weeks when it rained. Week before last hard. Last week when it was sunny and beautiful, and doing the same thing. Hey, Easter's coming up. I just want to invite you to be here for Easter. Do you think all 129,000 will show up this morning? I'm guessing not. But here's the blessing. Like my buddy Bobby, who sat and looked out the window and just watched, I've had the opportunity to do that each week. Bobby was faithful to his friendship all the way to the day he died. And someday, I believe, my friend Jesus, I'll get to see that friend again also. And so I just want to be faithful to my friendship, serving Jesus with the neighborhood, don't you? This is what we have the invitation to do when you ask Jesus to come into your heart, to go into the whole world together and make disciples. Heavenly Father, we come to you on this beautiful Easter morning, and we thank you for your son, Christ Jesus, who did what we could never do, who went to a cross and carried our sins, who was the ultimate sacrifice willingly, God, and called us friends instead of servants who you raised from the dead and lifted up into glory, Father, as the first fruit of many, as the first fruit of us, who go ahead with that great cloud of witnesses. I ask for that one who doesn't know you, Lord Jesus, as their personal Lord and Savior, that you would move in their heart this morning that they might receive you as a friend that will never leave, God, for that one who, like me, every Easter needs a fresh start, God. I would ask that you would move in their hearts this morning that you would touch them, that you would change them, that you would make a profound difference in their lives, God. And Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the people who have surrounded us with their prayers, with their love, all of our families who have lifted us up for the one who invited us to church at Central Community. We would ask that you would be with them, God, that we would leave no one behind. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for being here with us this morning on this Easter Sunday morning, whether it's at home, online, or whether it's here at, in church. Thank you for being a part. Thank you for those of you who have been through 36 Easter's with our family here at Central Community, and you've heard my stories about my friends, and you've heard those things, and you're willing to listen to them again for those who hear them for the first time. Thank you for being a part of all of that. Um, God is so very, very good. Pastor Ken was here at 5.30 already setting up the park, drawing off chairs, doing all that kind of stuff. Um, Marty and Josh were out there loading them behind them. They've got work to do between now and second service. First announcement for this morning is if you would like to help them, pitch in. Just go back and say, Marty, Joshua, what can I do to help? Pastor Ken, what can I do to help? Get everything out there into the park so we'll be ready for second service. And then you know what you can do is you can put a loving smile on your face and you can hand out bulletins. You can hand out bulletins, you can greet people, and you can say, welcome to Central Community. We are so 
glad that you're here. We only advertised the 10 a.m. service this year, and I thought, Ken said, you sure you want to really only advertise? Now we know what happens if you only <laughs> advertise the 10 a.m. service, but let's pray that God just loads us up for a second service and that we can have a blessed service outside this morning. This afternoon, we'll be going to the streets of Los Angeles. You're invited to that. Remember, all the announcements are on the back of your program. If you'd like to help out Jody, she'll be over there. She'll probably be boiling eggs or coloring them or doing something like that. And remember, we've got the children's. I saw, look back there and saw Trisha. Remember, we've got the children at 10 a.m. doing their Easter egg hunt. There was a group here yesterday packing Easter eggs. If you would like to help Trisha with all of that, see Trisha immediately following this. I, are you doing it in the courtyard, Trisha? locking those kids in there and just letting them have fun. So um, make sure that you see Trisha so you can help them load up bags with Easter eggs, probably way too much candy than they need. Um, Tuesday, we've got women's Bible study. They're watching Chosen, the movie, or our series right now still as they work through that. We've got the food packing team. We've got a pickup and in the afternoon. We've got Wednesday morning food distribution. We have got so much good stuff. Mother's Day is coming up the next holiday, and they're planning a Mother's Day brunch for that as they come up, and that's on the back of your program. Make sure to take a look at that. So many fun things happening at Central Community, whether you're at home, whether you're here in the fellowship here today. Take part, be a part. Let's celebrate Easter together. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. 